Are we ready? Yes, I think so. The fog has cleared and it's only 11 nautical miles. So we'll have lunch at sea. Last time on the show, we sailed to Kosebalia and Alestena. It's a tiny little harbor with a mythical stone ship on top of the hill. Our plans on sailing on were put on hold when we woke up to thick fog over the ocean. The fog had lifted, so we packed up and left Kosebaya to sail north to Schillinge. along the coast. It's a screaming cat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Lunch, uh, hot smoked salmon with different spices, <laughs> and uh, f I think it was fresh potato or yeah, f potato with spices as well, and a little salad. That's what we'll have for lunch today. Looks delicious. Mm -hmm. This is really one of the benefits of the sailing up here in the Baltic, that there's no real background swell. So when, we, when you have these light winds, normally if you would sail on the Atlantic, you would have really, the sails will be slamming in the rigging because you still have this background swell, but two light winds. But here it's possible to sail slow, but the sails will be stable. Right now we have four to five knots of wind and we're doing 3.1 knots of ground. I mean, it's slow, but it's really comfortable and no slamming in the sails. So really nice actually. It's quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. And also the days are really long and the distance between the different ports aren't that long. So we're in no rush so we can sail slow. They are very, very short. <laughs> yeah, today it's only 11 nautical miles. So. And yesterday was nine. Yeah. And when we were in Alaska, we had like um, 70. often 17 nautical yeah. miles in a day. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, the sunset is, uh, I don't know, 9.30, something like that now. Um, so even if we got underway pretty late, around <laughs> noon, I guess, today, we will reach the next harbor well in time before sunset. Heading into the fog again, it looks like it at least. Now when we're gonna change course and head more north around the, the corner here, there's still quite thick fog, so I don't know, we'll see what happens. We've been sailing along uh, Sandhammar nu, which is a beautiful, uh, I think it's a nature reserve, uh, with just uh, kilometers of white sandy beaches.
So out there in the distance, in the fog, lies Bornholm, which is a really beautiful island which we wanted to visit, but right now it's not possible because of the COVID-19 because Denmark is still, they still have their borders closed, so we're not allowed in. So sadly we have to pass Bornholm by because it's a really nice place. And the wind speed is going a bit up and down between four and six knots. So, but it's really nice. But we're in like a hole, so there's fog south of us and there's fog north of us and also a bit far out to the east. So it looks a bit strange. Looks like the fog is rolling in again at Kosebay at the moment. <laughs> what do you think, Malin? Is it time for the engine? Yeah, I think so. Right now we have three knots of wind. Yeah. Looks like we can't avoid the fog, as you can see. We're slowly, slowly getting into this fog bank now. So probably we will arrive at Huilinge in fog. Oi, what you say? something coming towards us now we see on the radar probably a, a motorboat because it's moving pretty fast so we'll just maintain our course it's a little bit scary you know when you can't see with your eyes you see it just on a screen the screen is telling you that something is approaching <laughs> You have to trust, <laughs> and you have to trust the techniques. Yeah, a monster in the fog. Something red. Yeah, something red is lurking out there. And it's moving like this, so it's almost like a monster that is like <laughs> blobby monster. Coming out from the fog bank, small motorboat. Where is it? The sailboat? Nice, oh, it's a sailboat. So there's our radar echo coming out from the fog bank. Sailboat heading south. Without a radar now, it's... Wow, you really have to be full focus all the time and be ready to, I don't know, change course. You can't sail. I wouldn't sail in this also when we're so close to land. So I'm thinking now when we were sailing to Alaska and we had fog for days, this thick fog out at the, in the middle of the Pacific, but it's also different when you're that far out at sea, it's not that much traffic, but there can be other things floating around in the ocean. I mean, one time when you on, on a previous sailing trip, you once saw a full, uh, like a dock like a swim dock like long with uh, several stairs going down floating in the middle of the ocean so imagine hitting something like that When we can moor alongside in harbors, we prefer to go with starboard against the dock, since this is the side where we can take most advantage of the prop walk on the boat. Now we 
we're here. I think we got a good spot. Yeah, definitely. The old part of the village is characterized by houses built so close to each other that there are no streets. Instead, there are winding paths called stredden. In 1868, a big part of the village burnt down. And during the reconstruction, they now built houses further apart to prevent future fires. The next morning, the sky was clear and the sun was shining, and no fog in sight. Hey, it's good, my girl. Yeah, was a little lazy, maybe. No, I think it was good. Yeah, I think it was so good. Är det gott med gröd? Så gott! Schillinge Harbour har en väldigt lång tradition i Sailing Merchant Navy. Det går tillbaka till början av 1800-talet, när en del av de farmare i den här regionen inte kunde göra bra business från farming längre. So they turned to shipping, bought sailing ships, and they shipped grain and other goods from here up north to Småland and Blekinge to sell it up there. And then from there it developed. And in the beginning of the 1900s, Schilling actually had one of Sweden's largest sailing merchant uh, fleets. And then after that, this, the sailing era, it became more of a, a fishing port, which it still is today. And it also has a really big, or quite big uh, wharf that do maintenance on sailboats, on fishing boats and uh, other larger vessels as well. I'm making some shrimp sandwiches from the shrimps we bought in Kosebaya. Classic rack macka in Swedish, uh, with some uh, hönekaka, with mayo, with some herbs, shrimps and egg, and some vegetables, um, and what is yeah, and some lemon. And uh, yeah, it's the first time I do it, so I guess it's my specialty, special rack macka a la Johan. Fina! Har du sett vilka fina mackor vi är? Jättefina ju. Det ser jättegott ut. Det looks very very good. And they're really pretty too. Vera, she looks very intrigued. You will have a bite as well. Så har vi en liten bit av ägg. Really good. Good. It was nice to blend in the herbs in the in the mayo. It was nice. Very well done. One thing that we did miss is the sometimes you have caviar on top. Yeah, fresh, fresh caviar. From. Mmm, egg yolk. My God. Mm. Du får din mat med, va? Mm, det är gott. Det är gott. My parents came to visit us, and together we went for a day trip. Hallå där! Vi befinner er på Grimmiehus, och här kan vi 
vi är den fina fasaden med bildtavlan ovanför som berättar att det var Jens Holgersson Ulfstand som skulle ha lagt den första stenen här. Och det var år 1499. This is the best preserved medieval manor in Scandinavia. It was built for a Danish noble and his family and it's built as a fortress and everything is still here. So it has this uh, Valgrave, what's that called in English? <laughs> I don't know actually. Uh, uh, the water surrounding it to have the defense. All the holes here in the wall where is where they had the cannons to also for defense. Pretty amazing actually that it has been so well kept. So you see the stone brackets on the wall. That's where there used to be a door coming out and probably a wooden hut attached to the wall where the where the toilets were with just a hole through the floor. Convenient and easy. There and there. Thanks a lot for watching this episode. Next week we make our last stop in Skåne before we cross the Hane Bay. By joining our Patreon crew, you make it possible for us to continue producing videos on our own terms. Please take a look at our Patreon page.